So, thanks a lot for the introduction. So, I'm David Inucci from the Australian University of Brussels. I'm a postdoc. And today I'm going to work with you uh, about this joint work with the, the University of Zurich and the University of Salerno. It is about uh, how, uh, is a study on how developers updated by the libraries in uh, their mobile apps. So, in particular, our goal was to analyze the circumstances in which they do it, why they don't do it, and in which case, um, basically, they are more willing to do it. So, let's start. In this talk, I will talk about libraries. So, you will learn, uh, you will, uh, learn about libraries in all the talk, and uh, we know that libraries nowadays are crucial for the software development. Uh, we know that using this kind of libraries you can save a lot of effort because basically you avoid to uh, implement it some parts of the, uh, your, some, some parts of your application. And then we also know, and I will give you some empirical evidence, that they are very popular for mobile apps. But we also know that libraries are software, uh, software as well. And so we know that they need to evolve. We know that the updates aim at making them more stable and reliable. So we know that during the, the time, if you have a library, then this library will produce more features, or will deprecate features, or will just uh, update because you have uh, to uh, complain with, uh, some, uh, with some bugs that you have and, uh, <coughs> to fix them. Uh, so why updating a library is important? First of all, because we know that uh, when you use an app, or when you, even better, when you develop an app, you know that you are going to have an intense uh, desired cycle. So we know that with respect to standard software, when we talk about uh, apps, we have like uh, uh, all the apps are using Agile, so you basically have that uh, every few weeks you have a new release. And basically this means that uh, user experience can change out. So basically you know that uh, the, the people will like or not your app with respect to what, uh, uh, what, which new features are uh, going to be introduced and which one are going to delegate. Uh, but also we know that these users are uh, the many testers of your app. So basically with respect to the standard application, when we talk about uh, mobile apps, then we know that the final tester is your user. And basically we know that if a library is going to change a lot and it is going to introduce bugs or is going to fix bugs, then we know that the only one that will, will, will check the uh, will test the final application is the user. But is it worth doing it? I mean, is it worth updating all these, uh, these apps? Because basically it means that developers must continually put efforts in updating these libraries. Uh, actually, what we know is that in most of the cases we don't mind anything about this. So basically, when a, a developer is updating a, a, a library, the use of a library, maybe doesn't know, he or she doesn't know, if if this app will, uh, if this library will guarantee uh, stability or reliability, or if we are going just to introduce, going just to introduce uh, new bugs or features that it doesn't need uh, uh, in the particular. But in general, and this is uh, from a, a work of Raula et al. from 2018, we know that developers are not really likely to update this. Uh, Also, because even if if they should do it, I mean it's it's like a common case, so they should do it. Basically, we know that in practice uh, it's not common for many developers to update uh, this uh, libraries. And from this paper, we know that in most of the cases they don't do it just because they don't want to break the build. So basically, they say my app, uh, my software work. I don't want to change it because otherwise I'm scared that uh, I will uh, introduce new bugs. Even if in the end, maybe we are just going to uh, like fix a bug or to fix a security bug, so we should really do it. 
So the goal of this study is to understand, first of all, how much is common from the data library during the mobile app uh, software development. Then we would like to understand which categories of libraries are updated the most and uh, less. And then we would like to understand that if, it's, uh, if there is any common behavior that developers follow when updating these libraries. Last, we would like to understand why developers update these libraries. So, what factors lead the developers to update these libraries? So, we conducted a large empirical study on uh, almost 3,000 applications uh, to almost 100 of them coming from F-Droid, so they were in source, while the remaining uh, were uh, coming from the WordPress store. And uh, actually, we, in the beginning, we would like to select all the apps that are in the, in the WordPress store. Of course, you cannot do it because it doesn't scale. But in the end, what we did is that, uh, first of all, we computed some metrics. So we selected the uh, sample that was a representative of what happened in the Google store and we take care of selecting uh, apps coming up for, uh, from all the categories of the Google store so that in this way uh, the, the selection was uh, the fair now. So basically this is uh, all the mining process that uh, we adapted. So in the beginning uh, we scraped F-Droid and uh, uh, we used the Android, uh, Android Time Machine. It actually is a, a just a, a, a repository of uh, Google Play Store apps. And basically, using this information, we were able to find uh, the apps that I was talking about. After this step, we cloned all the, these apps. So we had all this data. And basically, what we added in the beginning is what you can see from this picture. So basically, we had an information about when the app uh, was created, and when the app was, uh, uh, and when the development was done. After this step, uh, we started analyzing the, 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 uh, the, the, the file of uh, these, uh, these apps. Uh, it's important to uh, remark that uh, we selected only apps uh, using the uh, label. Basically, the idea is that we would like to use uh, uh, apps that were uh, novel enough. And uh, it's, uh, it's common practice uh, when uh, developing the uh, Android application to use a label, because uh, Maven has been uh, deployed a few years ago. Uh, and from uh, mining the all the real uh, build files, we are able to extract all the user dependencies for each app. So basically, if we consider the example that I showed you before, what we had is that for each third-party library, we had this, uh, this information. So in, uh, in this graph, this plot, basically you have on the x-axis, you have all the dates of all the users, <coughs> while on the uh, y-axis, uh, you have the uh, all the version of the third party library and then uh, for each point represents uh, an update in the build uh, the file. After this step, we start scraping the Maven, uh, Bintray and the other remote dependencies repositories. Uh, and basically we are able to plug this information. So for each library we are able to know which releases of the library were uh, published. So basically, we had this is an example of what we had for each library that was using uh, by each app that we considered. So the first thing that we would like to analyze is how much libraries are popular in, uh, in these apps. So first of all, we saw that Almost all the libraries are using the three star library. And uh, actually, this result is pretty, pretty easy to understand. But just because if you are developing uh, an Android library, then you have to use at least one library, that is the Android library. But in the end, we saw that there are projects that are using the up to the for uh, libraries. So it means that really, uh, this kind of developers really rely a lot on. Uh, 
But in general, we saw that the mean of the uh, number of libraries used is four. So it means that it's a common practice. For the first research, uh, research question, we are trying to understand when mobile, uh, do, uh, mobile developers update the third party libraries. So we uh, divide this uh, research question into parts. In the first part, we have to analyze whether they do it or not. So basically, we saw that 70% of the libraries were used but never updating uh, during the app development life. So basically, it means that uh, developers were introducing the, the, these, uh, these libraries and then never changed them, never changed the use of these uh, libraries. And then, so the first question is that only 1% of the commits that we have analyzed are about library updates. And in particular, when we have a look to the upgrades and downgrades, then we, we can see that only 18% of the version changes are downgrades. So basically, it, depends, it means that in most of the cases, they are updating the, the, the libraries with an upgrade. But when the opposite happened, it means that basically they were not able to, to use the new library. So after a while they were trying to uh, adopt a new version of a library, they were not able to, to use it. So they just decided to downgrade and then to skip the, the new version change. In the second part of this uh, first situation, we had a look to the technical leg. I will not spoil anything about this part. This is for later. I will just tell you that technically, the leg basically it's a way to understand how far is your uh, you are from the the, common, uh, the the ideal the ideal solution. So basically, how far are from the case in which you are updating, you updating all the libraries that you do. So basically, when I look to the leg, we found that. The technical gap is increasing all the time, and basically you can see that it's even worse what a current solving is done. So basically, when you have a look to mobile application, you will see that technical gap is never stable. So after a while, after years, it used to increase, and uh, you never have a, like, a, a plateau that is uh, that is fixed. Then adding a look to the similar research question, we try to understand uh, how the developers update the, these, uh, these uh, values. So basically, first of all, we try to understand uh, if it's related to the, the category of the library that we are there. So uh, we split this uh, research question into parts. The first two were about uh, which, library, which category were, uh, which kind of uh, libraries were more prone to be updated. Well, the second one was uh, the opposite case, so which one were not updated by developers. And basically, we saw something that it was pretty unexpected. Because we saw that the developers care only about updates and then the users can see. So basically, in the first case, the most updated libraries are the ones that are about the graphical user interface. In the second category is about framework. So it's a, it's a concern, the support that you have to add if you uh, use the last version of uh, the road. And then, after a while, you can see that there are uh, the third category is about networking and the cloud, the parsers, and so on. But, and it's important to remark that the paper is much more clear, but there are many, many categories that are not updated at the paper. So basically, you see that developers must use a, a particular library because they need a feature, but then they don't care anymore about uh, that particular uh, library. <coughs> After a while, we were a bit surprised about, about these results, so we just had a look to what the developers were saying in their commits about these, uh, these, uh, these updates. And basically, we saw that when it's about graphic user interface, they do it too. Just to have new icons, new colors, new palettes, and 
and the new teams of the Android uh, ecosystem and the Android ecosystem. When it's about framework, it's about the support that you must provide. Because otherwise, you cannot uh, uh, users that are uh, using the last versions of Android you cannot use your, your application. But then you also saw that for the other cases, actually the thing that it's that even if there are like uh, security vulnerabilities, there are just corner cases. So that they will never happen in a, in the app. So this this lead them uh, them just to say, uh, yeah, the effort that I have to provide uh, to uh, fix uh, the, these, uh, these bugs is too high for, high for me. So I will just skip this uh, this update. While in the other case, the just thing that the, there is a ratio between uh, benefit and cost. And this ratio is, uh, is not fair for them. So it means that uh, in some cases, and this is uh, really true for the uh, for the app, uh, the, the category that is about the maintenance, they have to refactor their code. And they don't want to refactor all their uh, architecture just to uh, use a particular uh, library change. <coughs> After this part, what we've done is to uh, try to understand if they follow common path when they update uh, uh, these libraries. So if you remember the example that I showed you before about uh, uh, this plot that contained the uh, releases and the uh, uses, uh, in the end we had like 11,000 of these, uh, these plots that were for, uh, for all the apps and all the libraries. And then follow the, uh, the others of this study, just dividing all these plots, and we're starting analyzing these, uh, these plots. And by the end, there was one of the other that had to uh, analyze other 600 uh, plots. In the end, what we have found is that there are some common patterns. So generally, you can see that uh, there are several patterns that lead you to understand uh, how developers are updating or not a particular library. <coughs> the first pattern that, uh, that we saw is the one that is the uh, that should be the optimal case. So it's, it's the diligent pattern. So in this case, and it's about uh, 60, almost 60% of the cases, what happened is that you see that in blue there are the uh, uses, while in blue there are the, uh, the releases. We say you see that every time there is a new release, then the developer is updating to that new release. And ideally, this is what you would expect in any case. Another case is the one in which a particular library has been used only one time, so it has been tried by the developers, and then the developers just throw that the library was not good for them, so they just throw it away. And uh, you could think that this is like a corner case, but in the end we found that in 8% of commits, this will happen. So basically it means that many times developers are trying just a, a new library, because maybe in the in the repository that we are using the, this library is very common, but then they are not able to use it, or it's, it's not good enough for the general use case, and then they are just dropping the app. And this, uh, if you think about this, uh, it's a dangerous case, a dangerous case, because this really means that the information that are provided from the documentation or from uh, the, the library repository, are not good enough. Because basically it means that they will not be able to understand a priori if the library was good in their case. Another case that we saw, another pattern, is the jump up. That actually happened in almost 9% of the cases. So basically what happened in this case is that developers are really not, uh, not following the release of the the releases of the, the library, but then at a certain stage, they just decided to move from one release 
to another one. And this can happen when there are, uh, and uh, these two releases are major releases. So basically what happens is that the developer are going from a major release to the following one without thinking about the minor releases. And uh, it means that basically they skip all the fixing and uh, all the cases in which they were, for example, uh, so vulnerabilities, uh, patches, and, uh, and so on. Another case that actually is another pattern that actually is not very common, it may jump down. It happened in uh, less than 1% of the cases. And basically, it means that developers went from a major release, uh, release to another major release that uh, was uh, uh, published before. <coughs> But just because they were not able to use the measure things. The fifth case is the back and forth. The back and forth is a strange case because basically you can see that in almost 2% of the cases, you see that the developer, the developer would like really to use the latest version of the app, the line, but actually is not able to do it. So what happens is that the developer is, is going from one release to another, and trying and trying again until at some time or you drop the, the release or you just use the uh, the one. But it's important to remark that in, in almost 70% of the cases, analyzing all these plots, we didn't find them. So basically we, we saw that there were no changes at all. So it means that developers were using a particular library and then you not know, caring at all about all the updates. The third research question is about the reason why they were doing that. Actually, if you think about the second research question is really uh, as the same takeaway away from the paper by law. So the, the developers don't like to update the data, uh, data, or when they try to update their apps. In some cases, they don't understand why it's worthwhile, or in some others, they just do it because it's, it can be like, I mean, they see that there is like convenience in doing it. But actually, with uh, this third research question, we would like to go deep in this, uh, this matter and to try to understand what was happening. So the first thing that we like to do is to, is to understand if there was a correlation between uh, the categories that I showed before and uh, the rates on the, uh, the app stores. What we have uh, done is to divide uh, the apps in uh, two categories. So for us, an aggregate app is an app that has a median score of 3.5 stars, while a low rated app is an app with uh, less than uh, 3.5 stars. So, what we saw is actually that in most of the cases developers updates their apps. These apps are pretty mature, and maybe you can see that diligent, the diligent pattern and the jump up pattern correspond to apps that have a really high inflation. Uh, While in case of uh, user ones, back and forth, jump <coughs> even in case of never changed, you see that most of these apps have a, uh, a low uh, rate. What is interesting to see is that in case of never changed, it seems that it's not really worthwhile to update these apps, these are libraries. Because basically you can see that it's true that in 55% of the cases, these apps are uh, low rated, but in the other, so 45% of the cases, even if the developers never touched the, the build of the, the, build of the video, and yet they had uh, nice evaluations from uh, their uh, other users. So we would like to go in deep with uh, this, uh, this part. And so what we have done is to interview the original developers of the apps. Uh, in total, in the beginning, 
we we selected only the developers that contributed with at least five comments. It was just a way to remove all the occasional developers that contributed with one or two comments to the apps. Uh, so in the end, we had uh, 1,600 original developers, and in the end, we had 70 answers. That seems to be not a lot. But the end, it was not so easy. But uh, our response rate is more or more or less in line. What other people, uh, uh, what other people are doing uh, uh, this kind of studies? So the first thing that we would like to do in this study is to assess is whether what, what we saw in uh, the, the previous uh, research question. So the first research question was true or not. So first of all, we try to understand whether developers really use third-party libraries. And in this case, we saw that by asking to them, most of them think that they frequently use libraries. So while only one developer told us that he doesn't use any uh, library, it's also interesting to see that there are at least 18 developers that use more than five uh, libraries. So basically it means that uh, this, uh, this result is in line to what we have seen uh, before. So this is our confirmation what we have uh, we had with our uh, previous universe. But why developers update or not their library? So basically, first of all, what we, saw, uh, what we need is to ask them, do you do it like that? And if you do that, why do you do that? Uh, first of all, they told us that at least they believe that they frequently update their libraries. And this is pretty strange because actually, in the first part of our study, we saw that the members used not to do that. It basically means that they have a, a strange perception. So they believe that they are following the updates and the, the, the releases of the, the library, but in the end, they are not doing really that. And it's also important to, to state that most of these, uh, these developers use to test their apps. Naturally, this is uh, a bit in line with what other researchers saw in the field. So basically, most of these developers test their app, and they are sure that test, testing their app, they are able to avoid the, the corner cases that we were talking before. So basically, this means that uh, in some cases, uh, developers do not update their app, just because they just say that their app is test enough, and they are not going to have any uh, advantage it's only an extra effort. It's also interesting to see that most of these developers don't consider the reuse at all. So at least 50% of developers don't care about the reviews that are on the Google Play Store on the, on, on the F -Dog. While most of them seems that they really care about the security issues within the apps. When they are, we asked why you do it, one of the answers that we got was it's just because Android Studio is telling me to update my, my library. So basically, every time <coughs> I, I compile my code, then I have this notification from Android um, Studio. So after a while, I decided to update my library and it was working. Another answer was pretty common. So basically, the developer just said it works, why well, I should do that? And it came a value with other developers, the developer that told us in the end it's a matter of regularity. So if you do, if you update your app regularly, then you see that it doesn't take a lot. While if you don't do it for a while, 
And what happened in practice is that uh, you have to really add an extra effort to just do it. Finally, finally, we saw that uh, uh, if you have a measured version, then it's much harder to update your uh, time. This, uh, this basically means that the semantic, semantic version works. Actually, this was a bit contradicting for us, because if this is true, it means that we, could not, we should not have any case of jump up, while in practice it happens. Finally, we got uh, a developer that told us that updating library is good to reduce technical length. Uh, technical length. And basically this means that there are some developers that know about technical length and they know that not updating libraries will lead to technical length. So just as a final remark on my presentation, most of the developers don't care about library updates. And in 70% of the libraries, we saw that there was no update at all. When we talk about taking a leg, we saw that in most of the cases, the taking a leg is increasing. And uh, we have no plateau, so we have, uh, it's, uh, it's increasing over time. In the few cases in which you have uh, updates that are actually in the 30%, then you see that most of these updates are upgrades. And when developers are not able to upgrade, uh, to, um, when developers are not able to use a particular library and they have to uh, downgrade, they do it only because basically they are not able to use the new version of the library. Categories are very important for uh, uh, library updates, and we saw that there are some categories like library user interface and the user of the other frameworks that are really important for developers, while the others not really very uh, important. Really, uh, in only 16% of the cases, developers are updating the library in a diligent way. So that they follow this pattern in which every time a new release of a, a, a library, uh, I mean a new library is released, they update the library. And indeed, in 66 percent of the cases, there are no changes. Finally, we there is a correlation between updating libraries and the date on the world is slow. And indeed we saw that even if there are few cases of G diligent and uh, jump up, all these cases are uh, related to much mature up, in which basically we have a really high ratio. And when uh, we talk about, uh, we talk with the developers about the reason why they do it or they don't do it, then basically they told us that when they do it, it's because uh, they see that there is a good cost-benefit ratio and also they told us that it's about the automation. So when uh, they have more automation, then they are more inclined to update uh, the use of the library. While in some other cases, they just told us that they don't do it just because they don't see that it is uh, relevant. And uh, this is particular stage because from uh, our survey we saw that they care about security issues. But from the information that they have, they cannot understand that uh, updating a library will fix a security issue. So what what we should do? <laughs> so basically from this study we had four main takeaways. So first of all, more empirical research is needed. Just because we should try to understand uh, which, are the, which is the impact of 
not updating his library or doing that. Because basically what we know is just that uh, in some cases <laughs> there are some security vulnerabilities that uh, could be introduced, but there are no study, uh, studies that state, uh, for example, what is the impact in the maintenance or uh, the evolution of the, the, the app. Another thing that uh, we should do uh, <coughs> is how to enable automated support. Most of the developers uh, think that uh, if they, they could update their library without uh, any issue, then they will do it for sure. Another alternative research line is about uh, update effort realization. So basically, let's say that we are not able to, uh, to, to uh, provide full automated support. And at least we should provide a way to developers to tell them uh, which libraries should be updated before. In this way, they could uh, reduce the impact of uh, not updating these libraries. Last but not least, we should try to predict uh, the cost of not updating the library. And the cost could be related to the new issues that could be introduced, or the bugs that could be introduced, or to the technical level in general. That's all for my presentation. So first of all, what we did is to uh, compute metrics for all the apps that were in the, in the Android 10 machine and the uh, F-Droid. And then uh, basically we computed the, the median of a set of statistics, like uh, the number of stars, number of works, number of developers, and so on. And then basically we selected uh, all the apps that were in uh, this range. So we didn't select apps that were uh, below a certain range. <coughs> This way, we were able to uh, not select uh, all the apps that were about, like uh, toy apps. But basically, this is one of the issues that you have in the WordPress tool, is that you can find many apps that in the end are not uh, alive, or many apps uh, which, uh, which not uh, are not on the levels. And uh, you all download all kinds of those apps? Yes. To be familiar? Yeah. Yeah, for all these apps, we can see all the life of the apps. And all of them developed with Gradle? Yes, all, just those developed with uh, Gradle. But just because I, I think that it's, uh, it's, it has been, uh, that payment has been delegated uh, three or four years ago. So basically, if you have uh, an app on GitHub that is uh, developed on uh, using uh, Maven, it means that it's not supported anymore. So if you like to uh, And uh, you find updates of uh, library to Gradle file. Yeah? Yes. Okay. So you mentioned that um, libraries are most often not being updated, and that one of the reasons is that the developers don't see the need to do it. Yes. Um, and then is it well? They are missing the connection between updates and security. Yes. Are there any other reasons for them to update? I mean, if this patch is not introducing security fixes, why should I, as a developer, update my app? Because basically, if you don't do it regularly, it means that, first of all, you are, you are missing some new features. And then basically, that you use. And then basically, you, it's, it's, it's the same question saying uh, why I should use the last version of the app. So it means that in the library you have like uh, performance upgrades, you have a uh, better architecture. So you presume that in the new release of the app, then you don't have a technical leg. But what I'm trying to understand essentially is, um, is it the usual, right? It's boundary between technical and the social. Yes. 
Uh, why would I like to use, why would I like to have the most recent iPhone? Not because it is necessarily providing me with additional functionality, but I might be not even using this additional functionality because everybody else has this most recent iPhone and I don't want one. Uh, it was stupid. Right, so what, where are we on this axis? No, but indeed you are right. I mean, it's possible that in some cases uh, uh, you don't want to update a library just because you, you don't see the extra benefit in updating this library. And it's possible that in your special case, for your special app, and updating to a new uh, library is worthless. But the real problem is that a priori developers don't know anything about that. So basically, let's say that I will have a, like a, a performance upgrade just by upgrading this uh, particular library, then a priori I don't know anything about that. So it means that developers that do it, they do it just because they say, yeah, okay, I would like to stay stick with the, the last release of the other uh, libraries. The ones that don't do that, they just say, yeah, okay, the, apps, the app is working, and uh, my test cases are being, so I should do that. So then essentially this means it's a discussion of uh, how many libraries are updated or not updated should be phrased in terms of expectation, right? If you already know that you have a certain part of the population which is not going to update your yes. apps, uh, these libraries and this discussion of kind of 100% is not really meaningful. Yes. But indeed, another research library could be just to try to analyze a particular app, just to try to predict what will be the impact on the, I mean, yeah, just to try to predict what will be the impact of upgrading to the new releases of a particular library. And it's something, just, I mean, what we will do is to analyze, for example, what other developers did in the past, just to say, ah, okay, so other developers did this app, they upgraded to a new library and they got a performance upgrade or they were able to fix a single bug, then I should do it. A more personal question. If you're looking at your mobile phone, do you have all the latest versions of the, all the apps installed? Yes. <laughs> of course. But this is, that is a personal problem. <laughs> Jesus? Um, for a small use of the division model of the that we found, uh, did you check whether it's something money? I mean, that's because they are using the tool and every time you can make it basically upgrade everything. We didn't do that. I mean, we didn't do it uh, only for. Uh, I mean, we didn't check the correlation between uh, people that told us that uh, they do it because of the automatic support and people that actually are doing it. But in practice, we saw that many developers, many of the 70 million developers, they told us that automatic support should be there. So basically, when they have like uh, notifications on updating uh, uh, the libraries, then at least they try to upgrade to. While in the other cases, they basically don't know anything. Uh, another thing related to that is that GitHub personally has started to send uh, pull requests to employees for yes. uh, all dependencies. At least for JavaScript, I don't know for that. But it would be quite interesting to research whether that has an impact or not on the partners. Yeah, 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 this is true because actually I know that uh, for sure for the vulnerabilities. Uh, now GitHub is sending a uh, like, uh, message in digest every week about the vulnerabilities that you have. But in, in the case of this of JavaScript, they go a step further because they are sending a pull request. And the package is not listening. That, that you can just accept it. And that means you are upgrading your libraries to the universe. And so that's quite interesting because the only thing that the developer needs to do is protect that. And in, in, in some cases they do, and in some cases they don't. Oh, and, uh, and, and from my point of view, it's quite interesting and quite related to this because it seems yeah. that this model of the developer basically should be accepting that. Yeah, yeah this, actually, this is nice, but <coughs> from my experience, uh, for Android application, you don't have any effect. Mm -hmm. So I think that they start having uh, this kind of support, maybe they start it on the last bit, but for Java, as far as now, we don't maybe it's only for JavaScript. Okay, and another related question is, how exactly do you compute uh, uh, in are that you used for the agenda and for the other uh, was the main backend tools? Uh, how do you compute the XHs? Is there a time of commit or time of authorship of the commit? Uh, we should go back and forth. So. Okay. So for the X 
edges on the yeah. unit? This is the track of the point. Okay, the this, guy, this means that this output was aligned from the 1st of December 2014 till the 1st of September 2015. Okay, fine. So uh, in the case of the back and forth model, yeah. uh, mm, could it be that they are developing two branches that are later merged? And what you are seeing is the two branches together? Because it's very strange that they change from commit to commit once in a game. I don't, I don't, I'm not but saying they are not doing that, no, right? Wait. But if they would be working in parallel in two branches, that would be exactly the bottom of the time. But why they should merge to the... At the some point they merge. The At some point they merge the branches. Because one is developing and the other one but, is But in this case we are considering only the master branch. Right? Yeah, I know. But at some point they, they merge everything into master. But the commit dates remain... But this means the that in the master branch, Commit dates, but when you merge, commit, yeah. commit dates remain the same. Ah, because okay. you have the merge commit. Right. And you have the two histories together. And that will be exactly the body. So that's why, I, I, I'm not saying that's happening, but maybe you should yeah. check. Yeah, because it would be quite yeah. interesting because... Uh, yeah, it's actually, yeah, 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 actually you're right, because it's a product case that we didn't see. Yeah, it's possible that uh, if they, uh, they were using the program like this, then you have this kind of behavior. Okay. The, the only problem is that probably you can only know by asking. Because basically the story of the git was there is really yeah, 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 of course. course. It's or or, or yeah. maybe looking at the kind of passes it needs. Yeah. Yeah. And this was the meaning of the second part of the yeah. study. So basically we saw that in some cases the developer told us that the way you can see this kind of behavior. Yeah. And another thing that I, I like very much that kind of chart. Mm -hmm. And I wonder whether the area between the blue and the and the and the other line and the purple yeah. line yeah. means something. But from a point of view it means something related to how much do they care about that gradient. I mean yeah. if you look yeah. at the area okay. I mean, yeah. the what, what I mean is that maybe maybe you can get a single number characterizing somehow how much the grade cares about that gradient. Because it, it, I, I I have not Never thought about representing. Yeah, actually, you're right. Because basically, I mean, if you see the best case, that is this one. Mm -hmm. Basically, yeah, we would, uh, we would compute the A and the rock for the purple, purple, the one for the. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And then we would consider generally the. And uh, probably that gives a single number that tells a yeah. story about how much we care about the gray. Yeah. Yeah. I would have. More questions? I have an entire list of questions to ask. <laughs> Please. <laughs> well, you can always ask those. You reuse your questions to ask Ahmed during the defense. Let's do that. Um, no questions about it. Ahmed, okay, actually, do you have questions? <coughs> I, I don't want to ask questions about the technical. <laughs> <laughs> you don't dare to ask questions today, right? No, we call it. <laughs> we will call it the special metric that I developed. So, yeah. so there's a range of questions which is actually related to the. So in this case, you studied mobile apps and yeah. third party libraries. Yeah. Um, so I was wondering, I have another question about the generalizability. So the first question is so you have these migration patterns that you identified specifically for third party libraries of Android applications. Yeah. If, suppose you would do the same type of analysis for. Uh, Normal applications, uh, would you expect to see the same types of patterns or do you think it would be other patterns? Even in that case, it also might, might still depend on the language in which these other applications are being implemented. Uh, actually, I think that we should have more or less the same patterns, but what I really don't know is about the distribution of these patterns. So I think that, for example, if you have a look to the standard, to standard application, I think that you will have more cases of uh, the each of the patterns. Because it's uh, basically what we, we, we saw by comparing the two studies, the one by Raoul and this one, is that uh, in case of standard application, then you see that developers, okay, they don't use to update in every case, but they use to update a bit more than uh, mobile apps developers. So I think that you, you will find more cases of jump up, of diligent, and we should find few cases of uh, never changed. There's something that's drives. Struck, struck me uh, was the, 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 the I don't know if this was a pattern or not, but the downgrades. 
Um, so, it was about 80% of numbers, right? Ah, no. Wait. So this was maybe not a number. No, it's not a This one. But, but still, um, so when I, yeah, so I was, fund is quite uh, large, if I remember, I don't know if <coughs> it would uh, respond to this. Uh, because if you so, I think also looked at the downgrades uh, for but not for mobile apps. But in, in this case, the number of cases that were downgrades was much less. I don't know what was the percentage. Two point five. Two point five percent. So there's a really big difference there in the number of cases where you actually downgrade to. Uh, to go yeah, to the actually, I'm still not correct. I mean, what is it? Because what, what we study is what people should do. They should. Don't be to have the most secure version, but in this case, it's what people already did. Yeah. So, uh, Another difference that's in this case, uh, the, the dependency process are somehow uh, um, uh, targeting one specific version. In most other works, we, we did uh, we consider dependency constraints that we accept a wide range of uh, releases. So in that case, it's most uh, mostly unusual to have a downgrade. Actually, what I don't know is, yeah, maybe it could be related to, to the kind of patterns that we have found. Because basically, for example, if you have a look to the, this uh, back and forth, then you can see that you have many downgrades, even if in the end it's, uh, it's just moving from one major release to the other. And I think that also this could be related to the fact that in Android you have uh, the frameworks. So what we saw is that in many cases, I mean, we, we saw it manually. That in many cases you see that developers would like to use the last version of the, of the framework because in that case they see that these are these are the advantage in using the last version of the framework. So like to last uh, Android uh, uh, framework. But in the end uh, they are not able to use it. All the, the, the integrating the new framework is not so easy. So in the end what they do is like okay, maybe I will not carry with me all the new features that you can have with the <coughs> I don't care about it for, for now. But in the end, they must like stay stick to the last version of, uh, of the Android support. So basically, what they do is that they try and try again until they are able to do it. And yeah, basically, maybe it could be related also to the fact that we are using the uh, pull requests. Because uh, if yeah, if they have like two branches, one in which they are using the new framework, and one in which they are using the old one, then. Uh, after the merge, you will see a lot of this kind of stuff. But indeed, we didn't find that many, many cases. So for the back and forth, it was about... It was about less than 2%. So it's one fifty. In any case, it's a lot of fun. Another thing you mentioned was, and I agree, yeah, this, so there's automatic tool support seems to be very important and will to totally influence the results you get. So if you have a, a system or a, an ecosystem in which there is some kind of tool support that allows you to upgrade uh, or sometimes might be enforce you, in this case it was encouraging, but it would be enforcing and it will totally change the patterns of the problem. Like patterns like one that you see here. Um, so basically suppose you what type of so there is already some kind of tool support available. What type of tool support do you specifically <coughs> that would uh, help better um, software developers to, to have up to date libraries? You mentioned already something like suggesting and prioritizing the libraries yeah, to update. So Actually, what we have, uh, you have right now is just that uh, within Android Studio, you have a scraper of Maven that basically is telling you you are using the, this version of the, the library maybe you should upgrade to the latest one. So it's just scraping for even and telling you, okay, you're using a different version of the and it's, and it's pretty simple. But I think that the way in which we should go, we should try to understand what other people are doing. So just trying to use like crowdsourcing to try to understand <coughs> whether an, an upgrade is an easy upgrade or is a, a, a very hard to upgrade. And I think that this is global because in many cases, we saw that for the same library, there were some developers that were upgrading and some others that were not. So basically, it means that uh, the ones that were more diligent and then were able to do it, it means that 
Ok, so sorry to go to the extent to which we are using a particular library, but at least for the minor releases, I think that it is normal. But of course, it requires that, for example, you do some, uh, some analysis on the semantic version, so you see, you just analyze if we are really sticking to the semantic version or not, I mean the maintainers of the library. But uh, yeah, I envision that in many cases, the like, automatic update can, could be feasible. I think, I think that the technical idea like here could be actually a good motivation to, um, to let people update. So there is, there is a study by um, Trockman where they analyzed the budgets of IBM ecosystem and they found that they have enough fields on the maintainability and the popularity of, yeah. of packages. So if we give and say, that, uh, say to users that these libraries are suffering from this uh, technical lag, this value of technical lag, while these ones are suffering from this value of the technical lag. I think that uh, socially these people will maybe be motivated to in reduce the technical lag. Yeah, I agree with you. If you put uh, like a batch on, your, uh, on the Google Play Store indicating uh, this app that it does not uh, follow the, the guidelines provided by Google or by third party libraries, I think that yes. We should be careful here because you might be introducing bias. Only projects that are ready to showcase their adherence to the most recent version will be ready in the first place to use this kind of badges. Because if I don't care and I'm concerned that people might see lack of pen, lack of usage of updated libraries, it's kind of something negative, I will just not put it. I mean, as long as your name is not GitHub, you cannot force it. <laughs> but it's more or less the same story of the coverage, right? Sorry? It's the same story of the coverage. Yeah. If I don't care about the coverage, then I will never put the coverage in a badge on GitHub. Or the that's very true. That's very true. Yeah. And it's also very tricky because um, when you're putting those badges, you're kind of suggesting that you are aware of some of the development practices if you should be positive. Or that essentially you think you are driven by the process rather than by product if you put it negatively. Uh, right? This is true. This true, it's, but this is a famous discussion, right? Extra functionality but, versus effect. Yeah, but I think that if we would be able just to help developers that care about the libraries, it could be uh, a nice trade off. Huh? Otherwise, it should be easy. Yeah, otherwise, it's about innovation. Right? You should educate people to update libraries and to reduce well, so far they are failing apparently. Yeah. At least in one point forty two percent of the case. Mm -hmm. And the final question before lunch. Um, so I think I don't know which slides so somewhere you talked about technical depth as well, yes. like forty seven or something. Actually, yeah, it's about. I think that the, the, the developer will consider like. So let's say that I have an app, and my app is using a lot of libraries. Then, when I consider the depth of my app, I should consider also the depth of the libraries. It's like a network. So, <coughs> it's if I'm using a library that has a lot of technical depth, uh, technical depth mm -hmm. and for example, they don't fix uh, security issues and other libraries, that also my, my app will have a okay. So basically, when you are using the library, you are incorporating in your app all the technical that of that library. I was interpreting it technically differently. It could be that because your own app has a technical depth, it is more difficult to maintain, and because of this, you are not able to uh, go to new 
I mean, there, are, there is no empirical study about this, but I think for sure that if, uh, even if, yeah, it's true that the mobile apps are, are not so, so big with respect to uh, standard application. But indeed, I think that if you have a, an application in which you have a, a lot of technical debt, then uh, how do you have a lot of code smells, then you will not. In cases where we consider also the transitive uh, mm -hmm. strutter libraries and other libraries, so mm -hmm. at which point is it meaningful to consider this transitive technical debt for your own application? Because after one point it just piles up because of dependence of the dependence of the dependence. So is there a meaningful point to actually say, okay? Yeah, the meaningful, the meaningful way should be to understand uh, which part of these libraries you are using. Because indeed, if, for example, let's say that I'm using the uh, uh, a library from, uh, from Apache Software Foundation. Let's say that I'm using a really small proportion of this uh, library. It's possible that in that small proportion there is no technical adapt at all, while in other parts there are code smells and these kind of issues. So, of course, it's, it's, it would be really coarse grain to say only because I'm using a library then I'm incorporating all the technical adapt. Uh, but this means that basically we should have some, some tools, some some support to try to analyze which parts of these libraries we are using and then to try to analyze recursively what is the quality of uh, our app because we are using the uh, those uh, libraries. Any more questions? No? Okay, thank you, Mario. <laughs>